If you already know what little fs is and you don't want any further explanations, go to 3 minute 38 seconds. Hello, my name is Tony and this is my lab. What if I told you that your microcontroller could have its own file system? Not just storing data in raw flash memory, but actually organizing files and directories just like your computer. Well, that's exactly what we're diving into today. Now, when we think about file systems, we usually picture Windows NTFS or Mac OS APFS running on powerful computers with gigabytes of RAM. But microcontrollers, they're a completely different beast. We're talking about devices with under 64 megabytes of flash memory and under one megabyte of RAM. Traditional file systems simply weren't designed for these constraints. Microcontrollers typically store data in raw flash memory. You write directly to a memory address, manage your own data structures, and pray that a power failure doesn't corrupt everything. It works, but it's a completely primitive and error-prone solution. Before talking about little fs, let's talk about embedded systems, other options for file systems. One of the best options at the time was SPI FFS, particularly with the ESP8266, prioritized for its simplicity. However, it came with notable drawbacks, like a lack of true directory support and issues with flash fragmentation over time. Another option called FATFS offered reliable compatibility, especially with SD cards that could be easily read by PCs, but its heavier footprint wasn't always ideal for constrained internal flash of microcontrollers. Enter little fs, a file system specially designed for microcontrollers, created by ARM as part of their embedded OS. Little fs is what happens when you design a file system from the ground up for the constraint and challenges of embedded systems. At its core, little fs gives you exactly what you expect from a file system. You can create files, write data, read it back, create directories, and navigate through a familiar file tree structure. What makes little fs so special is the fact that it's power safe, so corruption from power loss isn't a problem, it's incredibly RAM efficient, needing just a few kilobytes, and it handles wear leveling automatically to maximize flash memory lifespan while being lightweight, simple to use, and incredibly robust. So why would you need a file system? If you're reading an accelerometer and you're printing the data out on the serial monitor, you're basically throwing the data in the trash. But if you have a file system, you can store the data. And even if you lose power, you can still retrieve the data later and analyze it internally or externally. Two other very important reasons to use a file system like LittleFS is if you have multiple big files to use in a project like displaying an image on a screen or like the subject of the next video if you want to use your ESP32 to host a web server with custom HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. Without a file system, you're manually managing memory addresses and implementing your own wear leveling, which is error prone and complex. Let's start the installation. This website will be linked in the description. So first of all, you need to go on the release page and then you download the latest version. After that, you need to copy the file, go on this PC, go on your main drive, go on user, click your main user, and then go on dot Arduino. After that, you need to create a folder called plugins with an S and paste the file we just copied. To make sure that all of this worked, now open Arduino and click control shift P and write little to see if the plugin is now available. Now let's try the easiest example possible. We're going to create a folder, name it data, because that is the, the folder that the system is going to look for. And then you're going to put whatever you want in that text file. Make sure to put your ESP in boot mode and now press Control shift p and let's upload our file with the little sf file system. Okay. 
here are my settings once again if you want to copy them and you have an ESP32 S3 dev kit. While the code is uploading, let me explain the code. We're starting serial with serial begin. We're checking if little fs will begin. And then we're opening data.txt with the letter R meaning read. And then we're simply doing a while loop for reading every single character in the document. Now that the code is uploaded, we can open the serial monitor and see that we have the characters that were in the file. Now, for a little harder example using all the functions, go in sketch examples, go in little fs, and then go in little fs test. I recommend going through the sketch. In the sketch, you have list dir, which is going to list all the directories. You have create dir, which is going to create directories. You have remove dir to remove directories. You have read file, which is a while loop to read all the characters in a file. You have write file, which creates a file and puts information into it. You have append to a file, which is just going to append information into a file. You have rename file to rename files, delete files to delete a file, write file to, which acts a little bit like spiff. And then you have delete file to, which is a different way to delete with deleting a path. And then you have test file IO, which tests all the capabilities of all the functions. All right, now we're going to be testing all these functions in the setup portion of the code. I will not be giving you my test sequence, even though I'm displaying it on the screen, because I want you to try to make your own. You can also use the one given in the example sketch. Now that the code is done uploading, you can open the serial monitor and look at your test sequence and see if everything seems to be working fine. Thank you for watching. If this video helped you in any way, please like and subscribe. And if you're curious, the next video will be about using the ESP32 as an access point and hosting a website on it. And of course, we're going to be using LittleFS to store the website and to host from it.